Okay, so a while ago I got given this Ymaxit display, 14-inch uh, touchscreen display, and it is excellent. Um, but I've also been sent another Ymaxit display, and this one is specifically for Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, although it looks like you can use it with other things, so let's have a look inside. Thanks to Andesine for sending this to me. So inside the box we have Raspberry Pi 3B adapters. So this is a couple of HDMIs, a micro to USB-A, and in the 4B one we've got micro HDMI to HDMI adapter. And this confused me at first, I thought there might have been a mistake, but I think it's alright. I've got micro USB to USB-A. Obviously the Pi 4 uses USB-C but it's not using that socket, it looks like. Uh, I've got a couple of stands. Uh, it, it basically sits back on these stands and a Phillips screwdriver. A couple of speakers, a couple of oval speakers. Micro USB to USB-A, and a long HDMI to HDMI cable, probably about a meter and a half. I've got a cloth, uh, various instructions, and the interesting bit, which is the board. Let's get in a bit closer. And it looks like a lot of thought has gone into this. So this is the HDMI socket, uh, which is an input, obviously. They've got the touchscreen micro USB, the power micro USB cable. Uh, on the other side, we've got backlight and volume control. This is a rocker switch, so obviously you toggle between the two. Then we've got an earphone socket, three and a half mil earphone socket. This is where the speakers go. Obviously, they're not on there yet. Uh, this is a USB port, I guess, to attach the Pi uh, to the board. And you can see these standoffs here to attach the Pi on but I like the way everything is labeled nice and clearly. And because this has just got ordinary power and also HDMI, full-size HDMI in, we should be able to pretty much plug everything into it. So uh, I've got a micro USB cable. Let's plug that into my adapter at the back here to give it power and pop that into the power socket. And then we'll see which way up is, is the right way out. That's the right way up. Uh, and then HDMI. And then back to my Samsung Galaxy S8 phone again, just, just for testing purposes. And see what happens, see if it registers the display. Oh, I was going to say nothing yet, but it has registered the display. And uh, it looks pretty decent. If you scroll down on these uh, DeX phones, you can use your phone as a touchscreen. So you can see now I can start up the internet browser and call up apps. It's on a funny angle at the moment. There you go. So all of that is working. And I can even play my Xbox Series S on here as well. Okay, so there's not a lot of information in the instructions. It tells you what all the ports are and everything, but there's not a full assembly guide, but it looks like it's pretty straightforward. Uh, if I put the Pi on here, it doesn't actually sit, so it's gonna need the standoffs between the Pi and the screen. So I'm gonna put these in. So this one's not got the greatest of threads uh, and it's actually going in quite tight and I don't want to damage the screen. So I'm going to substitute this with another one because what you don't want to do is put loads of pressure on these because they may twist off because I guess they're uh, either hot glued on or soldered on. So in my kit, I will have pretty much the same ones uh, in here. They look pretty much the same. Yeah, it went down without any pressure on it so I'm sure that's going to be okay. So it's the micro HDMI to HDMI. So it turns out the one I've substituted is slightly taller and it means that this doesn't go in. So I think what I'm gonna do is try and redo the thread of this one. So I'll screw it in and out of one of these standoffs a few times to sort of re-thread it, hopefully. Yeah, that's screwed on much easier. So let's try this bit again. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's gone in fine. So I can get the screws in here now. Definitely helps having this screwdriver kit, especially with these. Okay, so that's the micro HDMI to full size HDMI. That's what's sending the picture to the monitor. So the legs go on like that. So it has like a lean back sort of design. So that's the legs. And now we just need the speakers. And they've just got to peel off a DCI bit. and the speakers are plugged in. It's much easier to plug the speakers in before you stick them in place, as I've just found out. So you can see that's the display with the HDMI and the power socket here. I'm not sure how you power the Pi. I guess you power the Pi directly because the USB-C is still accessible. So I was trying to work out where this one fitted and uh, I've just worked it out. You can see under here, there is a micro USB attached to the screen. So this must be touch functionality. So rather than using these, you're using these in here. Okay, that's gone in. 
There you go, so you can see that touchscreen one there. So it's kind of like a mini laptop with this Bluetooth keyboard. Let's plug in some power. So that's plugged in on the back here and it's booting up, but I haven't got any media in there at the moment. Yeah, I need to plug in a micro SD card. So here's Raspberry Pi OS, and uh, just to show that the touchscreen works straight away, uh, all of the functionality seems to be pretty much as it should be. Puppy Linux also seems to be fine with the touchscreen, although some of the little crosses and things are very, very small. And here's Ubuntu Mate, and as you can see, the touchscreen is working on that as well, so if I wanted to launch something, I can do. And here's RetroPi running from an SD card with the ROMs on a USB stick, and you can see I've got my wireless joypad adapter plugged in as well. Uh, and it's still being powered by just the ordinary Raspberry Pi power supply. I'm quite amazed that this is still running without needing any extra power. But as you can see, uh, it's moving through nice and fast. Now I've just realized that I haven't heard any sounds yet, and obviously I stuck the speakers on the back. And I had a look in the book, and there is a section, uh, this bit here, 7.2, modifying the config.txt. So I'm going to give that a try and see if I can get some audio through it. So if I take the SD card out and I pop it into my other Pi, uh, just so I can read the config.txt on the big screen. And I've copied the text into this document. So basically these are all the changes. So you can see there's some audio changes there. Uh, Max USB current, HDMI force, hot plug, uh, HDMI boost, and also the resolution of the screen here as well at 1024 by 600. So let's copy all of that. And let's open the config.txt uh, of, uh, well this is Raspberry Pi OS, so if I pop the SD card in and open the SD card which is Raspberry Pi OS, so it will be this one, boot, and config.txt, and then somewhere in here I just need to put that text, it doesn't really matter where it goes, so let's paste that in, I'll pop a little gap in there as well. Okay, and let's save that. Pop this card into the seven inch screen pie and reboot. So here it is all booted up. I've got a 1080 video in VLC uh, because my internet, I have no internet at the moment for some reason. My network is up and running, but I've got no internet. But uh, if I press play, still no sound. But if I right click on the speaker, I just need to change the audio to HDMI, which makes sense because it's, it's taking it through the HDMI port. And then if I release the pause, Las Vegas. Take it in, Cupcake. I'm finally working. I'll have to pause it there, but actually it, I think it sounds all right. Uh, you can see from the video it looks pretty decent as well. Okay, so I think I'm going to leave it there, but I think I'm going to try more of this in the future. Uh, I've got another 7-inch screen being sent to me as well, and I want to try that out. I also want to try... Uh, maybe using some sort of console, some sort of handheld system. Unfortunately, this is not quite wide enough to match the system, um, but uh, I'll be looking at that in the future. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.